Well, hello, hello, Beliefflings. Today's special episode release is a rare glimpse at our expansion episodes offered at Beliefhole.com. These are strange times indeed, and we know now more than ever there is a hunger for uncovering the mysterious and recounting the mind-bending tales that make this place so strange and wonderful. In light of this, we would like to present Expansion Episode 2.19, Kids Say the Darkest Things and Nightmares and Babysitting. If you like what you hear and need more Belief Hold to binge, head over to our website, beliefhole.com, to become an expansion member and get deep in the hole with double the episodes. Access granted. And now, my friends, tuck in the kiddos, lock the doors, and pump up the volume. Oh, hello, Jennifer. Come in, please. Oh, hi. Nice to meet you. Oh, it's a pleasure to meet you, too. I'm so glad you could make it. I know it was so last minute, but our last babysitter, Rebecca, had to cancel on short notice. So oh, that happens, yes. Yes, so thank you very much. Oh, I'm happy to have the work. How you are you can... doing tonight? Oh, I'm, I'm quite quite well, thank school's you. School's going well? It's going good. Excellent. So, Rudy is upstairs right now. I'm going to take you to him in a moment. Okay. But oh, he I... has some weird ticks that I thought you should be aware of. Oh, I'm sure it's no problem, Mr. Ofendorf. He he swears sometimes at night, in the middle of the night, it can get very intense and violent. So oh, okay. people think that he's possessed sometimes by demons, but it's really just a <laughs> moderate version of Tourette. So ignore that. Come this way. Come this way. Okay. Rudy. Rudy, are you in there? Yes, Dad. Rudy, this is Jennifer. She'll be taking care of you this evening. Hi, Rudy. Nice to meet you. Where's your back? Well, Rebecca, she had she had trouble getting here. She had a flat tire. I knew she wouldn't come back. Well, I, I'm no, here. No, it's not anything to do with you, Rudes. <laughs> it's That's fine. It's going to be okay, honey. It's nice to meet you. Jennifer's just as good. We're going to have a great time tonight, okay, buddy? Okay. Well, I'm going to get out of here. I've got a skedaddle. I've got things to do. But Rudy, you be good. Okay, Dad. And Jennifer, don't stay up too late with them, okay? Oh, I won't. I won't, Mr. Ufenor. Okay, bye. 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 Bye, Daddy. I love you. Love you too, bud. Well, hi, Rudy. We're going to have a great time together. Don't talk to me. Oh, okay. I'm not allowed to talk to you. Well, why is that, Rudy? Because the man in the closet said I can't. <laughs> the man in the <laughs> closet? Yeah. He said I couldn't talk to my last babysitter either. Oh, I had an imaginary friend when I was a kid too, Rudy. What's his name? Beelzebub. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. He's not imaginary. Go look. Okay, I'll show you. There's nothing to be afraid of. He doesn't like it when you don't believe. Okay, well, I, b- I believe Rudy. I'm sure he's real. I'll go, but I'll go tell him that he he, he can't play tonight. Okay? Don't do it. Oh, here I'm, he I'm doesn't gonna go. like it. I'm gonna go. No playing tonight, Beelzebub. Rudy's got a long day ahead of him tomorrow. We're gonna get to bed early tonight. <gasps> uh, uh, what was that? I told you not to go. Okay, okay, Rudy. Be be serious now. Do you have something hidden in the closet there? It's Beelzebub. Okay, Rudy. Well, I don't like this game anymore. I'm not having a good time. It's not a game. All right, I'll go check the closet. Don't do it. I'm telling you. That's what happened to Rebecca. (laughs) See? See? Rudy's just like I said. There's there's nothing. Ah, Please. Ah! 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 Boy. Wow. (laughs) Well, hello, hello. (laughs) Well, hello, hello. We hope that that uh, another improv uh, scenario. We, we're sort of doing a thing now, if you haven't noticed. Yeah. I hope, I hope you do. You let us know if you guys like it or if it's no, really don't. Dumb. I'd rather you not. That's true. We enjoyed it. <laughs> we like it a lot. <laughs> we like it's fun. It's but, fun. Uh, just yeah. for you patrons. I hope you got the gist of that to set the mood for this episode. Did Rudy survive? By the way, I guess that was my question. He always survives. Yeah, he's part of the demon. He's feeding. Do you think Rebecca really got a flat tire on the way over? Or no, do you think she's gone. 
She was eaten. I think by the dad knows too. The closet monster. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the dad's in on that. But he's got things God. to do. He doesn't really. He's got girls to see I have on the things side. To do. He's like a bit of a lush. I think that. The, yeah, I kind of think the kid and the dad are somehow involved. And uh, what like in cahoots? No, they, they know that this is happening. Like it happens mm-hmm. to oh, multiple. Oh, like they're sitters. both working with closet monster to feed it. Yeah. Well, anyways. Not a real story. Yeah, just an improv, a <laughs> uh, little, little uh, mood setter there. Hope you guys are now sufficiently in the mood to explore Kids Say the Darkest Things. Mm-hmm. That's kind of the topic today. I right? thought that was clever. Play on Kids Say the Darnest right. Things, you know? Yes. Also, Nightmares and Babysitting. Yes, yeah, so this this was kind of a kind of a twofold uh, concept here. I wanted to explore. Well, Chris had the idea for Kids Say the Darkest Things, right? It's kind of a unique topic. Yeah, I, I, there are videos I saw on YouTube and stuff where they do oh, like report. It wasn't really that unique. Why do you have to say things like that? You <laughs> <laughs> shouldn't have said yeah. <laughs> I mean, I thought that the, I didn't know until Chris came up with the idea. I, then I went to look for some, and I saw oh, there right. are some lists that are made, um, and there are a lot of creepy things that kids say. And us, neither none of us being parents, yeah. except for John, who has Jake, who's a dog and doesn't speak. English. English very well. count. Does. No offense, I love he Jake. He sees ghosts. He's kind of a human. I know. I just said, one of the things that used to irritate me so much with people would be like, I'm a dog mom. Oh, I know. Like, okay, I get it. I mean, and watching you firsthand, I do get how you can kind Does of that irritate you. It's still not the same thing. No, it's not. He doesn't well, talk. What, Jake? No. Uh, yeah, it's not the he same. He does thing. talk. He but does not see like ghosts, though. The point you were trying to get to, though, <laughs> is that, um, go ahead and finish your thought. Uh, so I'm not a mind reader. Yeah, the point was none of us are fathers at this stage in our lives yet. We all hope to be one day, and I often think about like I've had a couple experiences babysitting, like you know, as a babysitter uh, with a girlfriend. You know, it's not a very masculine job, but I was oh with a girl. Oh my gosh, get to the point. I know, really. <laughs> the point is because I'm not that familiar with kids. There are times where like kids are creepy, like they can be creepy and unsettling. So I, think putting the, things. I think what you're trying to get to the point is is kids have this sort of like weird connection with the magical and the. They don't have reality built into them yet. You know, right. they don't know the limits of reality. They think a movie and see it's real. Right, right. So they have this level of like imagination that can kind of mm-hmm. actually form reality right. in some way. Mental play with the world around and them. And they can see into your soul too. That's what I'm ta- that's what I was trying to get to. It's the look <laughs> and you're like, know Yeah, like they if know you're a faker. Exactly. If I'm like <laughs> pretending to be comfortable with them, they're like, Why are you weird? Yeah, they're like, uh, I can see right through you. You want strong and smart like daddy. You scared of me. Yeah. No, I I know how to deal with kids. I put them right in their place. <laughs> put them right in their place, in the closet. No, but that is true, though. Kids will look at you and they'll, they can size you up really well. Like, so is this guy, is he for real or is he like a uh, pretend yeah. person? Yeah, exactly. They see it in your eyes. It's, yeah. like, it's like a lion. They sense the fear and they'll test those boundaries. Yeah. And they're very honest. But John, you're right about the, the imagination thing and the reality thing. And the, But that's the whole conversation of the imaginary friend. Is it imaginary or are they really seeing something? That's sort of what we're going to be talking about today. Because, you know, that, that's the argument, and I think a lot of people out there that have kids, it's pretty common throughout the child's growth, especially the younger stages, they'll say something weird or off-putting right. or unsettling and out of context. And almost like way too old for their age in this right. little body. Mm-hmm. So there's always that people trying to figure out, psychologists and things like, how much of this is, you know, randomly putting things together from an idea that they had somewhere else. Um, so we're going to get into some of the really creepy stuff, and then I have a article or two I might get into about psychologist thoughts on where does imagination end and where does potential paranormal reality begin? Where do we have to start to say, maybe there's something more here than, you know, this is Billy's imaginary friend, um, Mrs. Durbin, who, okay. you know, is headless and wears okay. a dress from 1842. Like, we're also going to get into, I think, right here, some um, previous life accounts. This is a sampler of the weirdness of children. I have a thought. I know someone that I don't know him personally, but I know about how he raises his children. And <laughs> it's a weird wow. thing. It's a weird thing. I to watched say. this man. <laughs> and this man I shouldn't have said that. I go to the park. <laughs> I wanted to be honest about it. He's always there with his son. Please go ahead. He's very handsome. Um no, but this applies to a lot of parents. Um it's just specifically with him, he doesn't let his kids watch TV or anything. Uh-huh. Like he's very Yikes. like well, they're they're still pretty young. They're like four. One's four, one's two. Mm. But he always has problems with nightmares all the time. And it's just weird to me that if they're not exposed to any darkness in the world, yet they constantly have these horrific nightmares. It's yeah. like, that makes me go back to the whole thing that we always talk about, that there are these other entities that can feed off of children's innocence. Definitely going to get into There's some of that. two ways to look at that. There's the innocence feeding, right, from the mm-hmm. entities outside, but also... 
memories. You know, like some of like some a past life, or right? Something? So when I was first started looking at these stories, Chris apparently had a bunch of links that I was supposed to reference, and I didn't. And I just went my own way and found a bunch of other creepy things kids say references, and eighty uh, percent of them were unsettling uh, and mysterious and intriguing because they were they were things about like you know when I knew you in my past life, Dad, yada yada yada, right. you know, like that kind that's, of stuff. And we'll get into some of those. Interesting. Yeah, that's surprisingly more common than you'd think, and not just in. Eastern locations, like right. uh, you think, like yeah. in you know India and places. Where I bet you most parents though probably don't think anything of it. They're just like, oh yeah, Billy. Yeah, I think when it gets real, like real serious, I have a couple things in here like that. And this isn't going to be an episode on past lives, but when we do that episode, which I think we should, there will be a lot of experiences that we can really delve into and show that the evidence, like kids saying, oh, I remember this. This is the right. plane I flew in World War II. Uh, this is, you know, my Sergeant Major Alfred who went down with me in the plane and and then they look up and they find these people existed and then he yeah. tells them like where he lived. Like all those things, there are cases like that where they've built out the evidence based on what their child said to right. kind of prove that he did li- had this knowledge of this past life. Yeah. So we should do an episode on that at some time. There'd be interesting, but we'll have bits of that in this episode because it is a creepy thing kids say. Hmm. Yeah, I focused more on the real true creepy stuff. Like there's a man in, in my room did. and that's that's what I kind of focused on for this one. We also have a couple oddballs. I have a cool college creepy story because it was a spinoff of the babysitter idea. And by the way, anyone out there listening who is a babysitter or, or had a babysitter that has a creepy story while babysitting. Or a parent. Or a parent. But, but I'm interested in the babysitter angle because that concept to me has always been fascinating. Just the you're in a new house, you mm-hmm. know, not your house. You don't really know the situation, but you're there as the guardian. You're the guardian, and you're taking care against the wilds of the world outside right. the windows in the darkness. The classic like slasher horror. It film is trope. urban legend about the girl uh, who you know the calls coming from inside the house. I came across right? it that actually the origin of that. Me too. I did too. I went away from it because it was a little dark. It was uh, in the 70s, there was a babysitter who was actually murdered. And they, they think that's probably the, the uh, origin where that started. Yeah. Yeah. So that urban legend is truth based. But, um, dude, did you send me this? Yeah. We're going to, we're going to get to oh, that. That looks creepy. Yeah. I think a good thing to start with is this quick vid. And I know you guys out there, quick what? Sorry. This quick vid. Ooh. For all the kids out there. Unpack that. <laughs> this, this quick <laughs> streaming video. There you go. It's a kid's call. It's a streaming video. <laughs> If you guys are following along, check the Patreon link here, um, the expansion link. Yeah, you might want to watch this one because it looks pretty interesting. Yeah, we're, we're going to play this clip, and I think it's... I don't know how you can watch this and think that there's no such thing as ghosts. Whatever you want to claim ghosts to be, mm-hmm. there is something in this people's home, in, in this video, in the it's room not, with the baby. not fully materialized. Right. John, why don't you read the headline in here? Okay. Michigan couple says ghost seen on nanny cam scratched daughter. So I, I wanted to put this in here because not only is it very compelling evidence, but it's also, I think, a good way to start off this episode and not to get too dark right away. Every, I think as a parent, everyone's concerned about the safety of their child, so I don't want to like take this lightly, but it, it just goes to show that... Chances are pretty small this is going to happen. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I just wanted to play this to kind of point to the idea that sometimes when your kid is talking about something, there's a chance that they're really seeing something. It's not mm-hmm. always imaginary. And at the end of the episode, I want to get into a little bit of um, advice that child psychologists have in situations like that. This would be tough, I think, if I had a kid because I totally believe in this stuff. Yeah. And that's not really the direction you probably want to go with it. Like, right. yes, there are horrible things in the universe. <laughs> right. And they're, <laughs> they're watching you right they're now. They're in your room probably. We'll I have, have no to, control. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> Stay calm, Stephica, when the, things get crazy we'll in the stick dark. stick around at the end because I have some advice okay. there. And number four now, it is video of the unknown. What is it? What? Is it real? And what is it doing there? A family in Highland, Michigan believes their house is actually haunted and thinks something is harming their little girl. Get out. Seven Action News reporter Alan Campbell went to the home to see for himself. It happened here in this room as 15-month-old Lily was inside her bed. Caught on camera, something walks in front of her crib, catching Lily's attention. Whatever it is, the family says it needs to go. It's almost like she sees something that we don't. It's an image Heather and Josh say is haunting their home. (gasps) It was... What? uh, Chilling. Oh, that's full body apparition right there. It was literally a chill down your spine. Walking. Like like that what if factor. 
Like, is this what I just saw? Dude, there's no, I mean, that's real. <laughs> you can see the <laughs> locomotion, everything. Caught on the couple's nanny cam video a few weeks ago, what appears to be something moving in front of the baby crib. Dude, that's creepy. That looks like exactly what a ghost would look like. Yeah. I freaked out. I stopped what I was doing and I ran upstairs and I grabbed my daughter. Heather says this so-called ghost scratched her daughter, Lily, and attacked her too. These parents just seem stunned. They don't seem like they're hoaxers. No. It scares us that it could do something else. I mean, there was even an, a morning that I woke up and I had felt like something was around my, like someone's hands were around my neck. A team of paranormal investigators came in and tried answering some of the couple's questions and concerns. Josh's father, Jim, says it may be someone who lived in this house before. The story that I was told was the gentleman that lived here originally. That leather jacket. <laughs> I hear that crinkle. <laughs> committed suicide, apparently by jumping out this window. Sound guys are really pissed right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which is, of course, one full story down. The couple says they don't know why this so-called ghost is targeting them, but say they don't want any part of it. Man, that is legit. But it's not physically just going after her. It feels like it's going after myself, too. I couldn't get an explanation out of it, you know. So it's... Creepy, man. It's freaky. <laughs> Is what it is. For now, Heather and Josh say they will stay inside this place with Lily until they're able to save up enough money and move out. Someone start a What's GoFundMe. What's weird is it looks like it's moving like it's walking. You guys it's check it out. Definitely very creepy and very legitimate. Yeah, and there there's so many videos like this where things are caught on baby cams. Yeah, this was cool that you found this because this is one time where you get to see the uh, parents interviewed. Right, and I believe Heather yeah, they, and Josh. They definitely seemed like they look spooked. Yeah. It didn't seem like they were trying to hype it up or anything. And right. The one thing I thought was a little weird was the the guy they called in the ghost, the investigator guy, the paranormal investigator mm -hmm. with a leather with a loud leather jacket. Yeah. He said, "What I was told was that there was a man here who committed suicide, and this might be the explanation for the thing." But you don't get any backstory on like who told you that. They showed a picture of the outside. It's like not very far of a fall. He, and then he said, by jumping out of the window, he's like, "It is a one story fall." And I'm thinking like. You have to land a very certain way to I don't, kill I mean, yourself. they didn't really have time to go into, like, the history of his suicide. Right. But I don't, and I like most people are, that's not what the, what the story's about. No, I know, I agree. I just, that story sounded kind of yeah. weird to me. I don't know. Sometimes there's just not an explanation, you know? So this is one thing I thought about about having kids is having kids definitely opens you up to more mm. creepy things to happen. <laughs> you got <laughs> yeah. nanny cams, you got kids staring at the corner of the room. Yeah, and then you there. gotta deal with it. You can't just, like, leave. Right, <laughs> yeah. Good night, Tommy. Good luck in here. Yeah. I had that experience with a dog, and that's enough. Yeah. But at least the kids can talk, though, and tell you what's going on. Jay couldn't tell me anything. But at least Jay can run away. No. A child can't leave, a, can't move. Oh, right. But, I mean, where are you going to run to? I mean, I Out just... Out of the house? As far as, like, you know, humans have the, the most vulnerable young, in yeah. a way of, like, they can't... There's no protection for, you know, I mean, right. how many months, yeah. year, whatever... Um, <laughs> we were all human once, right? We remember a little bit. What a month, six <laughs> years. At least, when do they start moving? It was at least moving? a few months know. before we were running around on our own. As far as the animal kingdom is concerned, like humans are yeah. vulnerable for so long. Yeah, we suck starting out. Yeah, we have the biggest brains, but it takes us forever to mature. Yeah, I guess that's the trade-off. God's like, they're mm -hmm. not going to be awesome from the beginning. You know, it does give you time to form like really deep emotional bonds with your. That's true. Your parents, and maybe that's part of the human. Yeah, that's a good point, and also like community and. Not that animals don't have that anyway, but the the need to rely on your family right. a lot. I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure there's a give and a take in those situations. We're scientists. Anyways. <laughs> well, let's get into some of the, the things that have chilled people when they've heard it uttered from the mouths of babes. Let's do. And I know, I know, Chris, you and I have, uh, we each have our own, how you say, magazine of uh, creepy uh, statement bullets we might shoot at each other, right? That was really Is weird. this what we're saying? Uh, a Russian roulette, if you will, of, uh, of creepy things. We have different uh, lists of things, yeah. right? Yeah, mine's better. Well, I don't know about that. I guess we'll find out. Not a competition. Well, do you want to start here? <clears throat> Rudy? Sure. I'll start with some <laughs> basic creepy things that you might hear kids say. Jeremy, see, this is the problem. We're not here for basic creepy things. I want to hear the creme de la creme of creepy. Chris already is starting off better than you, and he hasn't okay. even read one. So I have mine broken up into two parts. I have uh, kids say the darkest things, mm -hmm. and then kids say the strangest things. And the strangest things are things that are slightly more intriguing and compelling, but not necessarily terrifying. They're more like, oh, that's weird oh. what could that mean and then it has implications of past lives and all these kinds of things i like it i like it i'm competing with you on the level of of creepy though that's my, that's fine you can do what you want and our we we'll, we'll put a poll up we we'll see <laughs> our listeners can tell us which ones they like the most okay this one comes from uh 
Jen Britton on Twitter. We'll have all these links. Jeremy likes the anecdotal stuff. What do you mean? I mean, just like the short little... He did have that in the last episode. What do you mean? What do short you mean? little... Stories? Yeah. Stop saying short little and looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? That's, well... You mean like the shorter story where yeah, he gets Jeremy, to the punch Yeah, faster. Jeremy just likes the... Well, I'm, he doesn't read. He's not a reader. I'm, I'm into the kung fu, the karate, just the one hit punch, you're Cobra done. Kai. This comes from Jen Britton on Twitter. We'll have these linked in the show notes. Woke up in the dead of night in total darkness. Thought someone had called for me, but all was quiet. Didn't notice that my three-year-old had crept in and was standing directly beside my bed until he whispered into my ear, I used to have a train set when I was grandpa. When I was a grandpa. Oh, that was when I was grandpa. You ruined it. Oh, you I'm sorry. A paragraph to read. I thought you were start with creepy. I guess not even that good now that it's no. not, he's not his own grandpa. Wah, wah. Which there are those stories where they're their own it's grandmother. It's still creepy though. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if creepy is the right word. I think it's kind of cool. Yeah, like, no. It's kind of exciting. Yeah. Well, it's it's it could be creepy if you've never really thought about the concept. Of I it. agree though. Your child saying it. Yeah. That could be creepy, but. Yeah, this should have been in the, in the kids say the strangest things. I like it though. It's, I mean, it's interesting. Yeah. And so there wasn't a train set out, was there? There's no more information. Weird. These were just tweets. Someone had posted a tweet saying, like, what was your what's the weirdest thing kids have said or the scariest? He was standing directly. So he's just standing beside the bed, walks in and goes, I used to have a train set when I was a grandpa. Yeah. That is strange. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Definitely strange. That would freak you out a little bit. Cause even yeah. you know, even if you're like, Oh, oh, do you mean that there's past lives, honey? That's neat. But also you're thinking like you used to be an old man. Like that's creepy a little bit. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. That's, you were dead before. Right. And now you're alive with and me. And now you're my three year old. <laughs> you're basically a ghost in my child's body. I think it's beautiful. <laughs> okay. Kay. It is beautiful. Go away, Chris. Chris, you want to take turns or can I? No, we're going to take turns because I want to. We are now competing for creepy. Okay. And I'm about to blow you away. All right. Go for it. All right. I was watching my little cousin. We were at my grandmother's in the middle of nowhere, less than 10 houses in the surrounding 15 miles. She was about three and was telling me about her friend playing along with her. I asked her where her friend lived. She points to the woods outside. I said, oh, with his mommy? She looks at me and says, no, with woods kids. I thought that was weird, so I just walked away, went to make some food, and she follows in minutes behind and says randomly, there's a lady. She killed the kids. They have to stay in the woods now. No. Isn't that uh, like Hansel and Gretel? In what way? Yeah, the kid... Children killed in the woods. What children killed in the woods? Well, I guess they were killed in the I guess cabin. They, didn't they get escaped. Actually, yeah, they didn't actually get killed. Oh, that's but it right. could have like sparked a <laughs> thought. Did they die in the original? I don't think so. There would be no story. That one of them was cooked in the original. Well, nah, in well, the oven? It's not like it's a Maybe not. Maybe first person good. account. How do you know, John? <laughs> it doesn't have to be an autobiography to be a folk story. True. The witch could have wrote it too. <laughs> she wrote but no, it's story. funny about the wood stuff. There are so many stories about hearing children in the woods bringing up the Hansel and Gretel mm -hmm. thing. It's very, I don't know what it is about woods in general, the ghost stories in general. I'm sure but, kids have been killed in the woods though. Yeah, by that's creepy sad. ladies. That's that. Or maybe that's where, just where they had their best times. And so you hear their, him laughing in, in the forest, you know, and that's where they return. Yeah. Anyways, that, I thought that one was pretty creepy. Jared, do you want to do another? I like Jeremy's better so far. Okay. Well, fuck oh, nice. You. It wasn't even scary. Okay. I know. Just there's a better story. All right. Uh, Chris, do you want to? <laughs> <This is mad. laughs> Chris, do you want to do another one before I jump back in? Or do uh, you want to? Sure. It was good though. I like it's definitely it. scarier like than mine. Yeah, definitely. Okay. I put all of the kids to bed and loaded up a movie the mom had suggested. It was a horror movie called The Babadook. We've heard of it. Mm -hmm. I saw it. Not a bad movie. Not bad. Part of the way through the movie, I paused it because I heard the youngest coming down the stairs. Yeah, you don't want to get seen that. She comes up to me, looks me dead in the eyes and says, do you want to die? Without hesitation, I told her, no, go back to bed. As soon as I hit play, <laughs> <Good response. laughs> as soon as I hit play, the little boy, about the same age as their youngest, asked the mother, do you want to die? Whoa. I thought it was freaky, but I chalked it up to her maybe seeing the movie with her family already. Why would the kid that age see that movie? Babadook. <laughs> when her parents get home, I told her mother about it. She has never seen the movie. Apparently, she just does this sometimes while sleepwalking. What? Yeah. Mm. She just asked, do you want to die? I don't know if that's what she means, or she just will say things that are slightly predictive of future events. I don't oh. know. That's bizarre. Either way. If that's true. That's, that's yeah, a definitely terrible creepy. thing to say to somebody. Pretty creepy. Especially if you're a kid. You don't say that stuff. No, you don't say that stuff. Go back to bed. 
No, go back to bed. <laughs> I'd be like, what? What are you talking about? <laughs> hey, you think that's a conversation you'd have like sit her it's down? It's a conversation like, starter. Yeah. Not an ender. Um, no, why? you don't want to die, do you? I feel like that would be the, the next <laughs> yeah. question. Not like, go back to bed. I'm watching the Babadook. <laughs> I certainly don't think I'd turn on the Babadook again <laughs> no. if I was watching someone no. else's kid. No. And they're like, do you want to die? Unless you thought they were trying to intentionally creep you out. How old did it say they were? Did it say? Five, I think. Oh, wait. Yeah, the youngest, I don't know. But the point was she'd never seen that movie before. So right. there's no way she'd know the next line. But who knows? I mean. It's still, yeah. I still would have been kind of freaked out because it's like, I probably would have assumed that she wouldn't have seen it. Yeah. And, you know, and that like, just because she saw the movie, like it was just probably a one little and part of the How would she memorize the I line know. right before that scene? It like, just seems a little too predictive. Yeah. To, it's spooky. Do you guys want to hear another one? Sure. Okay. So it's a bit longer, but it's interesting. Oh, great. All right, this comes from Ash uh, on Twitter. I have a little sister. She was about five at the time. Was having trouble sleeping. My mom didn't like to leave their door closed because the youngest would get scared. She thought that if a door closed, that she was all of a sudden not a part of the house anymore. I used to close the door to the bathroom while peeing, and she thought I had actually left the house and started screaming and banging on the door. Anyway, Michaela, the older one, couldn't fall asleep and asked my mom if she could close the door because when the door was open, she could see into the kitchen and she was, quote, scared of the shadow people that hide under the kitchen table and stare at me. Mm. That'd be pretty creepy. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, because they should know what shadow people are. Well, obviously, it would be the most obvious description of people made of shadows, right? So they would, it sounds like know. they're describing what they see. Yeah, right? I if guess they know so. what a shadow is, I guess. That's a good point. Yeah. I mean, would you say shadow person or would you just be like, maybe? The, the dark man? The fig- yeah. yeah, I mean, there's a bunch of different names you could mm-hmm. say. That's a good point. That's a good point. Would well, they know shadow person? Oh, you think this one's bunk? It's not impossible. Shadow people is kind of specific for that name. I don't know if a kid would, maybe. Think how, well, it's, I mean, how old is the kid? I watched that movie. You know, the one that was really done well with the visuals? Yeah. That really did look like a shadow. Yeah. Well, so, and that's the thing. I think you can make the argument that, yeah, a kid might say a shadow person. I would say a shadow it's person. It's the most if specific I thing. It, right? If they've seen Peter Pan, they know what a shadow is. I hope I can sleep tonight. All right, moving on. <laughs> uh, I can do a quick, kind of fun one. Sure. You can John read one. John, why don't you read this one? I haven't read one yet. Read this guy. This is from Jen on Twitter. This was my first. At the store, we'd had a nice day, picnic at the park. Suddenly, he grabs my hand, squeezes real hard, and says, Mama, when you die, I'm going to make a little you so I can keep you always. Like with your skin and eyes, and but probably not your insides. All smiles. <laughs> That's just a creepy thing. Yeah, it's kind of funny, though. It's obviously like, not paranormal. With your or, skin and eyes, but yeah. probably not your insides. That's just weird. It's smart that he would think to take those out. That's yeah. like a, that's what the Egyptians would do. You don't know how to keep care of them, you know, if you're going to mummify. Yeah. I used to, when I was a little kid, I used to think that you could buy body parts at the grocery store. <laughs> really? I remember visually being able to see like fingers and like that's where you just went if something fell off or What? Yeah. What? Well, that's where you where did you go? I thought that people went to the store when something did, fell off. Or yeah, if you just needed another one like a leg or Really? Yeah. Well, I guess a makes parts sense. store. Yeah. That's so funny. It's funny cuz like that's that's like all these people have these memories. Like I was reading one where uh, someone was hearing noises in the house when they were a kid or something, and w- someone responded and said like, "Oh, you know, this probably was when I was a kid. I remember thinking that there were people walking down the halls all the time until I finally figured out that it was my heartbeat <laughs> at night. Like she could hear. Like the weird things. Like I don't have any memories that young where I where I was piecing together reality. You know, weird. to that extent. That's weird. It is like when you're that young, life is a psychedelic experience. Yeah, absolutely. That's crazy. I used to think that there were. I don't know if I believed it or if I just imagined, like it was an imagination thing. But I remember I would, I had these whole narrative storylines about um, oh, that in, inside of my body, there was a whole city. And in That's the city, true. in the city, there was one boy who was me, who looked just like me. And he was the only one who knew that outside of the city, there was a whole universe of like Wasn't he our a, reality. He was the mayor, right? That no, lived no, no. Your- there was a mayor. And the only other person that knew about this, the outer existence, the non-internal simulation, about I thought about it, uh, was the mayor because his loft was, of course, behind the eyeball. So he could see the real, our world. The mayor of your inside city lived in your eyes. Right. And saw the outside world. There and was he one- kept everyone else in the dark. Yes. Except for the one little boy that looked like you. Yeah, he was, so that's kind of made him superhuman. That kind of gave him a superpower. He was Neo in yeah. your body. He was your body. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, it's kind of like was the, 1980 the Wizard or of Oz. 
Yeah. He was the man behind there the was. Curtain. I remember there was one day where everybody in the town found out how somehow, like the kid's identity was revealed that- This is blowing my mind. Yeah. His body <laughs> was the one that was controlling this universe that they all lived in. Uh, so they had, the mayor decided to work with the kid and they all, they gassed the entire town and made them forget, like some forgetful gas. So then everybody Weird, went back dude. to normal. That is bizarre. I told mom about that when I was like five or whatever. And she was like, Dave, I think we might need to take Chris to <laughs> Go back to bed. Honey. Yeah, man. Dealing like, with guess little kids a, like that, yeah. like when they start saying, like, you're like, what? The like, hell there's a there's people on? inside my tummy and they live and they. How do you respond to that? Yeah. I had a vivid imagination. I guess. No, I, no, go back to bed. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I would see a therapist for. What is it called? Uh, oh, regression, regression therapy. Yeah. Just to remember what I remembered when I was a kid. What if you stumbled across something very unpleasant? I think I'd be fine. Like a finger in your butt. Ooh. That's weird. <laughs> Speaking, John, of your body parts store, mm. maybe this kid was in league with you because there's a kid here. Um, this comes from Lil Wanker on Reddit, but he said, uh, I had a child tell me she wanted to jackhammer people to death and then build a playground out of their arms and legs. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Gosh. That's intense. That's pretty yeah. intense. You might want to watch that one as she gets mm-hmm. older. I would love to hear our listeners we have that are parents hear their stories of their kids. Like if, they, yeah. if anyone's, I'm sure they've had creepy things. Said or just really weird random stuff right, right. too. Yeah. Well, it would be cool to do a, like an off-cuff kind of episode on that, like going over some of our listeners stuff that they've experienced with their kids. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We should definitely do that. Send them in guys if you got them. Or if you're a babysitter. Did you have another one, Jerry? Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll do another one here. Um, I know Mike's kids have said weird things. Really? Yeah, I think all kids do at some yeah, point. Yeah, for sure. We just don't have the luxury of when we any do access when we to do that. a because there's so many of these anecdotes. We we do another one. We should gather from friends and family that we know personally. That'd be fun to get their little take, maybe in a little recording. Because I I know we've had some friends that have told us things that are like, oh wow, sure. Yeah, didn't didn't one of them say something about you guys dying? Oh, that's Brad. Oh yeah. Oh, I forgot about that. They were like, hey, Jeremy and Christian are going to die, and and then you were like, well, what did you do? Ask him like how or when? He's like, no, I didn't think. He's about like, it. Ah, I didn't press him. <laughs> didn't press him. You're like, what? I remember that. We made it through at least the new year, I think. Okay, this comes from Kyrie McCauley on Twitter. On several occasions, my son referred to the, quote, guy in our old house. He's big like daddy, but it's not daddy. He'd tell me the guy was standing in the dark hallway. After no talk of it for several months, one day he suddenly looked up at the ceiling and whispered, guy is back. No, thanks. (laughs) That's something you hear a lot too, like the looking in the corner of the room. Yeah, it's the ceilings. I've got a story that comes. Ceilings floating above the yeah. ceiling. There's yeah, a, and that would suck. Mm, like floating above the bed, floating above the <laughs> crib, nothing looking you can down. do about that. You're just yeah. like looking at the blank. You're like, what? And why is it? Why is it like, yeah, I've come across a lot of these. I didn't grab all of them, but there's a lot of them where there's like the old lady on the ceiling. Yeah. So many times there's I some have floating. A, and ghosts float, Jeremy. They do. Well, wouldn't you, if you could fly, wouldn't you just always be yeah, kind of floating? Yeah, wouldn't be around? on the ground. No, it's boring. You're dead. Yeah, it's one of the best parts of being a ghost. There is a story coming up at the end <laughs> at the end of this episode that I want to get to when we start to talk about advice for parents and psychologists' advice when your kids are seeing stuff. But there's a story of an account of a, of a little girl who sees something like that where it's kind of up in the ceiling. It's one of these things where like she goes to see someone and they basically tell her like she's psychotic. And you find out that that's kind of the wrong diagnosis. Well, well, we'll get to it, but it's like... Well, yeah, it's, it seems to be a very common thing, like in the, in the corner, in the ceiling, you know? Yeah. Maybe it's just cozy up there, you know? When dad had his out-of-body experience in college when he was studying, and a lot of people have this experience floating up to the corner of the room. Uncle John, when he had his out-of-body experience, he floated up and sat on the curtain rod looking down at his body. forgot about that, like Peter Pan. Yeah. That's funny. So there's something about the corners, man. In mm-hmm. shadow people, you always see them in doorways, in thresholds. There's something, maybe it's just cozy. Would you guys want to see one if you could, a shadow person? I have. What? Remember? I've told mm-hmm. the story three times on our show. I must have not been listening. In your old room, in mom and dad's. And it was the most terrifying experience I ever had in my life. And it so was, when you were head, uh, you're frozen? Yeah. Sleep, sleep paralysis? paralysis? Yeah. yeah. But it was the most... Do you really think it was a shadow person or it could have been something else? Like you, you were, you did see it when you were like, fro- like in I a, was awake. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the thing. You go back to... You know, you weren't like walking during the day and then you just saw no. him in the corner of a room. Right. Which doesn't make it any less real. But. The thing that makes it to me so realistic is that, I, for number one, I was awake. Number two, the intensity of the fear. I've never been so scared in my life. I've never felt so much dread, so much, uh, quote, evil. Was that in my old room? Yeah. Man, there was something weird in that room. John, you used to tell me that you saw faces in the wall. 
Do you remember that? I, I, we've gone over this before. I saw lights in the wall. You told me faces. No, I never said that. Maybe you said that to spook me more. Maybe. That was your child brother. But that the shadow person, the fact that it's it, the commonalities of it being the darker than night, darker than the darkness of the room. That's what mm-hmm. I saw. It, and I think that's what makes it so realistic is that it's the common traits that people share from around the world of the same scenario. And yeah, the, I, the skeptics will say somehow it's part of the the sleep paralysis that there's something induced. There's something that it's going on with the brain mm-hmm. that that creates this sort of image and this sort of sense and fear. Um, but I think there's too many, and like in that shadow person documentary, there's too many accounts of commonalities in these things, like often wearing a hat. Like a hat man. Why are there so many commonalities if it's just like a brain randomly hallucinating something? That's what or doesn't seem to make sense. The hag on the chest. Yeah. And I get that. A lot of times you sleep on your back, you, you know, you'll feel that pressure, I guess. And that's when people will mm-hmm. supposedly wake up in paralysis and have feel pressure and they'll see this hag. When you're laying on your back. Yeah. So you're laying with your chest exposed. That's every time I have those nightmares, it's that's what it is. And I would know. when I was with Jess, I would tell her, Don't lay on your back because that every time I woke up to her screaming. There is something about that. And there's two different there ideas. One is like, okay, you're you're, you're exposed. Well, there's some pressure. Like you're laying on your back, so like you feel maybe pr- more pressure on your chest. Yeah, you feel you pressure side. on your sides. What's when you're difference? laying on your side. Well, that's a good point, but maybe it might be that it's constricting around your your lungs, your heart, your oxygen. Where it, maybe it's harder to breathe. Like hokum to me. But to me, I, it's also the, it's, <laughs> it's a good demon perch. Is, exactly, it's a good perch for like a, a entity to feed off. You just can sit and yeah, I can just see it. Your solar plexus. hovering over you. And my theory is that the solar plexus is the connection to your unconscious self. And the reason I say that is because every time I ever dream about flying or having powers in my dream, it always comes from there. It comes yeah. from the solar plexus. That's how I fly in my dreams. That's how I levitate. Donnie Darko too. Oh, the, yeah, the Donnie Darko view yeah, of the, your, your future path. Plexus. Yeah, and I think there's something to that. I think that... Uh, it's like Eastern philosophy. It's the core, and I, may, I don't know anything about chakras, but maybe there's something about your chakra there that's like your heart center, and there's some energy there that maybe that's where it's the best to cradle and feed from an entity, perhaps. Yeah, I Pre- say creepy so. Creepy enough. Shall we do some more? Let's do it. Okay. Uh, this comes from Phonetics on Twitter, whose picture was Bob Ross at the time that this was snagged. Back in the day, my younger brother used to tell us about his, quote, other grandparents in the blue house they used to live in. After always telling him he was making it up, he told our mother he could bring her there. So we went for a drive. And this five-year-old little psycho gave her turn-by-turn directions for close to 45 minutes. We ended up four to five towns away at a dead-end street with an abandoned blue house. Creepy. I gave myself chills when I read that. Couldn't you argue he just had his mom drive around until she got to a blue house like there it is but it was at a dead end there's no getting out okay but yeah you're right it's, was it's it possible. for sure the house uh i mean that's where the story ends <laughs> <laughs> there's way better like past life yeah there, i've got, got more here okay i'm warming Phil. up i'm warming give up it a six uh what and a 100 oh they're gonna say five which would have been great well, let me let me jump in <laughs> let me jump in all right chris let's get from from you and then i'll have john rerun okay when my brother was just learning how to talk, just learning how to talk, mind you, he grabbed one of those small toy hammers and crawled onto the sofa where my dad was sleeping. He then leaned in close and whispered one of his first sentences, smash daddy's head right into his ear. Pfft, really? Some of these, I mean, of course you can't know if they actually That's said That's true, these. that might have just been, maybe he was watching a cartoon. I'm going to skip past that one. This one I think is creepy, and there's a lot of stories you didn't, like this. You literally didn't skip past it, you just read it. I'm going to skip past your reaction. Okay. (laughs) When my brother was little, he acted like he had angels talking to him every second. Little John D. One day, my mom overheard him say, I can't kill him. He's my only dad. Wow. I don't like that. Watch your kids. (laughs) Seriously. Yeah. I wonder how good of a dad he was. (laughs) He might be the best dad. Probably great. That's why they're after him. Yeah, they want to... Yeah. Take the innocent. I don't think those were angels talking to him. That's right. the point. Oh, you're saying, but maybe like his dad was the bad dad. Yeah. And so psychologically, said, the trauma had created. But I just this. feel like if you're a really amazing dad, he'd be like, no, he's my dad. He wouldn't be like, I can't kill him. He's my only dad. Well, well maybe Chris didn't say with enough emphasis. It's also one sentence from emphasis. an anecdotal account. Who knows? Yep. I want to read one. All right, John, I'm going to have you read The Snowman. My daughter, who is going to be 10 next January, has always been the opposite of our son. She has never had a problem sleeping with the lights completely off from the moment she had her own room. As she got older and was able to express herself a bit more and talk to us, it's a bit hazy now, but I think she was about three. She came to me and my husband and asked if she could start having a lamp on like her brother. We obviously asked why and instantly wished we hadn't. 
She wanted her light on because the snowman that stands in the corner of her room at night was keeping her awake, so she wants a light because he doesn't like the light. Obviously, we went into the room with her to see if we could find anything that in the dark could be mistaken for such a thing, but none of her teddy's posters or toys could be mistaken for a white person. Plus, she has a blackout blind, and with the lights off, it's pitch black in there. She has always had the lights on since. Okay, so the weird thing to me, obviously, this thing she, this girl's seeing in the corner room, and we've all had those experiences where we wake up, yeah, you know, in the middle of the night, and your brain's trying to figure things out, and you yeah. see, I always see spiders, I see giant spiders, which never really scare me, so I'm not scared of spiders, but I see them, and they're running around, weird. it's weird, they're always red, red light, what? and then black spiders. Um, Why do we have the same hallucinations, we're identical? I don't know, uh, but my point is, we'll get to your hallucinations in a second. I always see sexy ladies. <laughs> Okie dokie. <laughs> my point is that, uh, what's interesting about this story is like, when kids say stuff like this, like he doesn't like the light, like exactly. they they know somehow his they, what this thing that doesn't exist wants. Yeah, especially when it's so aligned with a typical uh, spirit or shadow person. Like right. the light is they're not, they can't they're exist like in the light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that they know that based on how this thing must act to the child in the dark, that somehow it, something it does tells the child it doesn't like the light. That's just kind of an interesting thought. You know, right? Um, I mean, it could be that it goes away when the lights on, and it's, I mean, he must leave because the lights off or lights on. That's a possibility. But I think maybe it's maybe it is something. You know, creepy. Was that it? That's the snowman story. Yeah, yeah. So th- those are. I have. Uh, I've got more. I've got strange things kids say. John's already peeking ahead. Well, let me jump in. You've got some more creepy yeah. things. This one comes from Kate TX on Reddit. What's this called? The new stepmom. I was watching my cousin's seven-year-old, and my cousin had just gotten remarried. She wanted to tell me stories of her own after we read a book, and all of them included her brutally murdering her new stepmom, stabbing her, ripping her limbs off, and throwing her into a pit of hungry dogs were just a few of the things she did to her stepmom in these stories. I asked her to give me a story with a happy ending instead, and she said that the stories did have happy endings. (laughs) <laughs> it's kind of obviously it's, it's macabre yeah, that's it's a child funny. dealing with right. you know changing not liking home. her stepmom yeah it was kind of kind of sad kind of humorous though yeah and then macabre tragic kind of right way. yeah uh, i'll do one more in that vein of kind of there's a little bit of humor in there mm-hmm. maybe not so much paranormal but just odd um this is called robo boy <laughs> and this is by glitter skulls I had accidentally broken his recorder by not catching it in time by the time it slid off the table. The boy I'm babysitting said, Hey, don't break things. When you break things, you hurt feelings. You hurt my feelings. I thought we were friends. That was an accident. I am (laughs) self-aware. The fact he pointed out that he was self-aware made me laugh and feel creeped out at the same time. Since then, he has been staring at me every time I have to take care of him. I am self-aware. I am self-aware. That's bizarre. That a, that's like a 3,000-year-old <laughs> demon coming in for yeah. a second. I am self-aware. I am self-aware. I mean, I get the RoboBoy title because it is like, I am self-aware. You know? Like awareness, yeah, yeah, AI kind of thing. But, but it, it could also be like... How old was he? Is it, I uh, hate when they don't say how old they are. I mean, if that's like a four-year-old, five-year-old saying that... So self-aware is pretty... I mean, that's like saying... Yeah, it could be a term we picked up. Or from if like, it's something possessing the kid or something, you know, in this crazy idea. But if you were to say you're like an adult in a kid's body or past life kind of thing, you'd say, I'm self-aware. Like it's like saying like... I don't think uh, say that. I feel like if you're an artificial intelligence, then somehow you've infected a human okay, being. Okay, but that's obviously, he's not a Borg child. I think it sounds... How do you know? It sounds yeah, more know. like to me. That there like, are Borgs among among us at John, this point. you're not even a sci-fi fan. <laughs> you don't even know what a Borg this is. This is not sci-fi. This you, is, what series this is, is what's sci-fact. Fact. What series is the Borg from, John? Oh, I think, I'm just saying the robots. <laughs> I think he thinks we're talking about cyborgs. I'm just saying robots. <laughs> well, robot. I, well, I want to know if people. you know, though. I'm curious if you, if you can <laughs> no, ask that question. No, of course not. Star Trek, come on. I was going to have him guess. Star Trek? Guess which <laughs> <laughs> soccer <laughs> athlete. <laughs> <laughs> Says it like we're nerds over here. Star Trek? Not Next gen. nerd shit. You're missing out. I am self-aware. <laughs> I am self-aware. There you go. Now, what if he had said it that way? That would be weird. Then it's not a laughing matter. All right, Chris, you got some more creepy ones Then here? they're taking over. It's a taffy gladder. Taffy gladder. That's just a rhyming word. When Taffy gladder was 13 years old, she had trouble making <laughs> friends. <laughs> taffy gladder had a weak bladder. <laughs> Let me tell you about it. <laughs> All right, Chris, do you have some creepy ones? Let's do sure. a, Let's do a one or two more okay, creepy I, ones and then we'll two, take a break. Two in a row real quick because they, they kind of work together oddly. 
And again, it goes to, I guess, things being up in corners and things. Um, this is called Don't Bring Up Wolfie. Babysat my nieces one summer. One afternoon, I was pushing the younger one on the swing while the older one was dribbling a soccer ball or something. I was pulling the one hand pushing the kid, other hand scrolling through Twitter move, when all of a sudden my niece gets off the swing and hurried to the house. I asked what's wrong as I thought she might have been hurt or something. And she just said, I'm going inside. Wolfie is in the tree. Neighbor's tree hung into my brother's yard. Shook me up a bit. I just kind of let it go. When their mom came home, I brought it to her attention. She had a look of, not again, come across her face and said, if she mentions Wolfie again, just tell her mommy made him go away. Weirded the fuck out, I then proceeded to drive home in an hour's worth of traffic. I brought it up to my mom, and she even said, don't bring up Wolfie around her. That's something your brother and sister-in-law have been dealing with for quite a while. This thing goes deeper than I imagined. I'm so curious to ask her about this Wolfie when she's significantly older to see if she remembers him. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah, there's a little bit of mystery there. Wolfie. What's deeper than that? And it, there's a story right after that that kind of connects just in the way of environment. John, do you want to read that one? It's pretty short. It's called A Boy in the Tree. My folks' farm surrounds a cemetery, and my dad and my niece were walking down there. My niece, four, looks up and says, What's that boy doing up in that tree? There was no boy, but she insisted there was and could describe him. Hmm, curious. There were some other ones like that that I read that I didn't include, but it's that idea like they'd be sitting on the porch and then there would be a little girl on the porch with her babysitter about to take her inside and she'd be like, where are those people going? And there would be, she's like, what do you mean there's nobody out there? She's like, all those people walking through the woods. Like she, kids just seeing these things. Yeah. It's about graveyards where they would see, quote, you know, tons of people walking it's around. It's just an opening, seems like. Mm. Yeah, with children. Just, yeah, there's a little bit of the veil that's thinner, but maybe probably because they just came from that place, you know, or came from that in between period of time. They passed through that, uh, the, yeah, that, that space between. Yeah, I was trying yeah. to think of a good word for that. Are you guys want to take a quick break? Yeah, let's take a quick break. And uh, when we get back, we have a few more creepy things kids say. We have some strange things that are kind of even more compelling and mysterious uh, that may point to certain things in our reality. And then I also have some creepy stories not related what kids say. Okay. I've got that college one that I found that was really interesting. Right. Really creepy. Anyway, better be good. You keep mentioning it. You can it. do whatever you want. Hang in there, guys. Show. Thank you. We'll see you shortly. back yes we are we are back again i said six b's in a row oh that was a fast counting you That's, did that you know that the, the b is in um yiddish is it's a six num numerologically so you just did uh what six 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 what are you saying six. I don't know. My mind forget it. Was, it doesn't make sense. Awful. Cut that out. Um, okay, I had a lot of these Bud Light seltzers. Why don't we start back in uh, with something a little nice, huh? Okay. Before we get back into the I dark. like the inspiring ones. This one's this. I like this one a lot. I like the near death. Erica ones. Molinex uh, on Twitter says, "My daughter, from a severe brain injury when she was 11 weeks old, was in a coma for three days. For years afterward, when it rained, she would comment, it smells like God.' Hmm." So if you ever wondered what God smells like, you're welcome. I didn't say thank you, Erica. Okay, so <laughs> I thought this was really nice because I, whenever there's a fresh rain yeah. and you get that smell, mm -hmm. the ozone, you know, like the, just the idea that like, like life, a, like a, a child would say, this is what God smells like, mom. You know, like yeah. the idea of just like fresh renewal. I don't want to take away from the sweetness, but 
11 weeks old, she was in a coma. When did she start talking and saying it smells For like... years afterwards. she's connected... Her mom's connecting it to oh, the right, coma. Oh, she's making the connection, yeah. I mean, it's a cool thing. It's a cute thing. Wait, cool thing girl says. Here, when she was 11 weeks old, for years afterward, when it rained... Oh, that's interesting. Oh, yeah. that's yeah, You're kind of right, because she wouldn't be... How do we know she's connecting point? it to her coma? I mean, it's... Well, she's, she's making the She's connection. making the leap, yeah. yeah. That she, like, had that time with I God, mean, it's a beautiful I sentiment. I do love the smell of rain. I think everyone does, and it, it does remind me of creation. And Did you know there's a word for that? I wish she would have asked her down. Synesthesia? You guys do that all the time. What? It smells like Camp Luther. Right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, synesthesia, yeah. It smells like kindergarten <laughs> art class on a Wednesday. Yeah. This song feels like blue. Yeah. I do that a lot. We used to, when we used to mixing the senses, right? When mm-hmm. we were in our band, A Ballad Alchemy, in high school, or after high school. Plug. Every song, I would look at the set list and I would see them by color. Like, uh, Ken Klein was blue. That's yellow for me. Daydreaming Autumn Oaks was blue. That was gray. Dying for Texas was orange. That's blue. Boring. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, but you, you attribute, like, you know, I'm sure a lot of people out there do. Yeah, and there's varying degrees. I think most people have some some version of Sunsage. And then the really extreme case is like, you know, they'll paint landscapes based on sound, which mm-hmm. is cool. Anyway, did you know there's a word for that? Petrichor. That's awesome. That is the word for that smell. That smell of rain. Yeah. Rain falls, the fresh smell. I miss this, that smell. This is what's fascinating. This ties together uh, Erica's daughter's thought with the definition of petrichor. It comes from the Greek. Uh, petrichor is the earthly scent produced when rain falls on dry soil. The word is constructed from Greek petra, or rock, or petros, stone, and ikor, the fluid that flows in the veins of the gods in Greek mythology. Oh, interesting. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Makes sense because gods are up above. So god blood and stone equals the smell of fresh rain. Petrichor, it sounds like dinosaur heavy metal. Petrichor? <laughs> it's pretty awesome. I feel like someone should make that. Dinosaur no. heavy metal? No. Like, <laughs> the smell of rain. Like, the, <laughs> that it's the same chemical interaction, you know? Yeah. Instead of just like some dumb, like, Lysol plug-in. Mm-hmm. It's like the smell of rain. Like, it's actually... It's not a bad idea, actually. The chemical mixture of whatever's happening What outside. it is, it's, well, what they think it is, is certain... They don't com- know? I thought you said it was the blood of gods. It, okay, well that's that's the Greek. <laughs> that's not very that's the old Greek tangible. idea. Tangible. We'll put a link in the show notes. But petrichor now is there's scientists that have actually done studies on this. To, it's ozone related or something. The part of it, if there's lightning. If there's lightning when the rain is happening, it's usually more with lighter rain than heavy rains that they smell it. Right. But when there's lightning, that's when you'll smell the ozone as well. Oh, interesting. But uh, it has something to do with, supposedly with the uh, certain oils in the plants, uh, certain kinds of plants that uh, when it rains, it leaches in, into the soil or up from the soil, I can't remember which, from those plants. And when it oxidizes, the water molecules that land on the leaves, I believe, uh, the oxygen or the gases in the plant surface as an air bubble in the water droplets of the rain. And then... Uh, Did you just take a class on this? I know, <laughs> this is good, very Very astonished. I'm kind of enjoying this. See, it was very visible. Keep telling you, Jeremy, this is why reading is good. Yeah. Well, I do. Why I re- did you have to... I was interested in what he was saying. Well, continue. That was it's pretty a, much it. It was when the, the bubbles of air... I missed that part. So s- explain that one more time real quick. So when a raindrop falls uh-huh. from the sky and lands on one of these plants... Yes. The gases inside the plant at the surface layer of the leaf or the, or the vine will, uh, will rise through the water inside the water drop to the surface of the water drop as an air pocket and then disperse Weird. into the atmosphere. Really? And it carries the oily smell of that plant and that is the fresh, earthy smell we know as petrichor. No way. Cray cray, huh? I thought I had That's to do with the stone. Intense. Is that cool? Yeah. So it's the plant oils that escape through the... Raindrops. Raindrops. Landing on the plant. They release it. It's so insane. Cool? Who discovered that? The scientists did studies, they say. Wow. Yeah, I don't always believe scientists, but when I do... <laughs> when I do. I believe these ones. I, they don't have any money to make on that. That's when I believe them. Yeah, because it's just... They're Unless just they're selling a, uh, selling a rain elixir smell. <laughs> like what John wants to sell. Right. Why can't someone make this petrichor and put they it in... They weren't smart a, enough to make it, though. That's true. But they didn't see the, the profit in it. I'm guessing it would be uh, grass. I feel like when I've had the memory of that smell, it's usually like somewhat of a small town environment, like a lot of grass, a couple of trees, but not like the forest where you get that smell. It's no, usually like no, no, more grassy no, areas. No, no, no. When it can be. You, I don't think it smells like grass. It no, seems, no, it doesn't smell like grass. I'm saying when I smell that smell, that beautiful rain smell. What about smell, all the leaves? Think about how many leaves there are around. Are, you know, growing it's a up. a weird debate. Growing up in a, <laughs> I started growing up in a neighborhood. And I started growing up in a No, I said I remember growing up in a neighborhood. I thought you said I started no. growing up in a neighborhood. No. <laughs> anyway, that's m- most of my memories. Is like I'm in someone's yard. There's not like, I'm not in a forest. Very so scientific. the max amount of plants there are is grass. 
You can just click the link in our show notes, guys. Check it out. Petrichor on Wikipedia yeah. that talks about it's specific, dinosaur heavy metal. It's specific kinds of plants, I believe. And I don't know if it's grass. I, don't I, think I would it argue is. probably I don't not think it it's is. grass. Okay, moving quite along back to the topic of our episode, we got some more creepy things that kids say. You guys ready? Yes. Mm, that's a hard turn left. <laughs> <laughs> Let's set up the scenario. I had a whole idea, a whole uh, creepy sound. Okay. All right, kids, lock your doors. Put kids, the, kids aren't listening to this. All one. right, guys, parents, lock your doors. Babysitters out there, turn up the radio. Crack a bro. Lock the kids in their room. Don't go in when they say they see something. And hunker down. Get ready for this next part because we're about to warn you about the things the kids say. Did we do that already? I'm just getting, I'm getting back in the okay. mood. Is this work at all? Is this working at all? Yeah, yeah. Let's John, hear it. John Let's... has this vacant look. <laughs> Johnny <laughs> Five. <laughs> oh, he's going through 80s movies in his head. Okay. All right. This comes from Christiana on Twitter. Okay, now this, this is interesting. This gets into the strangest things kids say. Uh, a little weird, compelling, interesting, past lifetimes. I'm intrigued. Is it more than just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. This, this one's pretty cool. If this is real, this is definitely fascinating. 1991. Worked at pediatrician's office. Screening a five-year-old for therapy. He lived in the country. No friends. Homeschooled. Parents had no TV. Mid-screening, he looks at me, says... Your brother saved my life in Desert Storm. I went cold and pale. My brother was in Iraq. Weird. Oh, weird. That's definite past life. Wait, but if, if, it's true. if her brother saved his life, why has he been reborn? That is interesting. <laughs> uh, well, he died later. Why of like does a, he? Yeah, he, must have he was eating the chicken Can wing? he only talk about how he died? Can he express? Well, if he knew the if he knew the pediatrician, the girl, Christiana, and or, or knew the name and somehow he did say. So this is ninety one. Yeah. Weird. That is, doesn't make sense, though. Yeah, like well, he could have died shortly after he returned home, or something. Possible. And this, yeah, th and this is interesting too. You'll see a lot of these at times where, like, uh, oh, there's. I didn't get this one. It's about the Titanic. Uh, Did you come across that yeah. one? I I, I tried to veer away from ones that have to do with famous incidents because I feel like there's more likelihood that there was some sort of overlapping of hearing something or right. But there's also more likelihood of it being reported. Because it ha it's interesting because I it has guess. a historical connection. Anyways, but another weird thing about this this one from Christiana is that um, I guess like how would the kid the kid was like a someone a soldier in Desert Storm right who uh, was saved by her brother in Iraq. Uh, would he recognize the sister by name and like did yeah. he see a picture of her in, right, right. in the war? Or maybe there's just some sort of like energetic like, right. if connection. If you are younger, I mean the potential right. to, to get yeah, that. Yeah, a little more liberty with the energy and connections. it makes more sense if the child was like, I was your brother who died because he would know that person. He would know the nurse or whatever, the pediatrician. Right. Not like I somehow he knows it's the still sister. It's a weird the, thing to tell someone. Sure, yeah, Especially sure. since how would he know what Desert Storm even was. Yeah. Well, yeah, if it's real, then obviously there's something bizarre happening. Yeah. If it is real. A lot of ponder in that last one. Yeah. Okay. And for all you naysayers out there, this is pretty common stuff. Ask your friends. Ask around. See who's... Who. I don't think a bunch of naysayers on the platform, probably. You never know. <laughs> for all our patrons kind of that love paranormal. Well, I mean, there. You know, I think when it comes to stories like this, where it's anecdotal, people you don't know. Right. A lot of our episodes are about research, digging into people right, have written a lot saying. of books on topics. This is anecdotal off of Twitter. Sometimes you know you're like, ah, come on, where's the evidence? Right. And some of these, I, I sniffed out a lot of these before. I, I didn't even put them on because a lot of them were just too. Did you snuff it out? I sniffed it out. You yeah. snuffle, snuffle up against it. Snuffle up against it. Uh, this comes from Leslie Anderson. Not creepy, kind of weird and beautiful. This is another one of those, like the rain story. I taught a group of kids that included a little girl who was deaf and received an implant. She loved telling me all the new sounds she discovered. My favorite was that she thought the cicadas were the sound the sun made until she saw one. Whoa. Aww. Isn't that cute? That's, That's adorable. So, because it makes sense, like, especially in the summer, like the cicadas start yeah. going and the sun's coming up. Oh, was like, she blind? She was deaf. And then she got an implant. Then once it started working, she'd hear the sunrise sound like cicadas because the cicadas would start chirping. That's uh, so interesting. Isn't that, that's just such a kind of a beautiful idea. Yeah. yeah. It is the sound the sun like makes. The rain. Really. Think about it in a, in a it macro scale. It doesn't mean scale. anything other than just the interpretation of exactly. the child. Interesting. Just, uh, it was just nice. A little, yeah. A little breath of air I liked in it. the episode. All right, Chris, you want to give us something horrible and terrifying? Uh, is there anything, anything left here besides... Why don't you read Child Support Enthusiast? This is another one of those weird ones, just kind of okay. like a psychic kid type stuff. My daughter told me that the place she was in before she was born had a bunch of babies waiting to be born. 
except they aren't babies there. They're all five, and they pick their mom, and then they go in her tummy. So you hear a lot of stories like this. Yeah, that's uh, pretty common. Or they're in a waiting room. They're in a shopping gro- like I for grocery store ones where like there's dolls of the parents. Yeah, like they the way pick. you get your parts from the store. I mean, that's mm-hmm. where I get that from. Yeah, maybe. Does that mean we all pick to be each other's brother? I wish you would have. I wish they tell you how old they are when they say it. There's a lot I of know. people that don't give an age. Yeah, come on, people. Well, on you know when we do when it comes to this pre life stuff, I have books already ready to go for this topic. And in those books, there are research banks of actual people with full names, their locations, their information. We'll do that episode because some of those stories are so incredible, and they're but they're the pre-life ones, like before I was born. This yeah, and that. that's like the opposite of the near death kind of thing. Yeah, there was one one example. I forget exactly the details. We'll we'll do this episode for sure. But it was about a child who had basically witnessed his brother die before he was born and tried to save him. His brother died, and then he was born later. And Wait, remember, how does that work? So he he was around and somehow had seen his older brother die before he was even born. He had drowned in a pool. Okay. But when he was born, and then, you know, no one told them about this younger brother because the kid was pretty little when he drowned. And Oh, his bro- his actual brother. Yeah, and he said he would talk about, he said it was my, my brother, I remember my brother drowning in the pool and me floating over to him from you, Mommy, and trying to comfort him and Aww. it was before he was even born but was he, he in the womb no it was before he was even oh no he might have been in the womb might have been his mom's womb i'll double check well we'll do an episode on that because that stuff's so interesting like there's this um pre-life idea i think it was pre-womb it was before he was even conceived but he had a memory of his brother dying because he was it was close to his conception i mean this is getting really out there yeah but there's plenty of these stories out there yeah that, what about you two didn't you tell mom? Chris ate my umbilical cord. No, didn't you tell mom <laughs> that um, you came here to make sure Chris doesn't get lost? Oh yeah, was well, that what I said? Something like that. I, yeah. See, I don't remember the story. You said this before. I don't remember. I've heard it mom multiple said it before, times. Yeah. yeah, like that was part of your a purpose. Okay, I, I, <laughs> I was still doing that every day. <laughs> <laughs> and so true. Yeah. What? How's that true? <laughs> <laughs> what? What? <laughs> There's some truth to it. Uh, a little bit. It was, I can't remember. It was more like, it wasn't lost. It was like Chris gets attached to things. And like Jeremy makes sure he doesn't get too attached. I think that you're extrapolating that from whatever no, I swear baby it statement he made. <laughs> Definitely how I feel now. Yeah, I think you're. No, but it did though. The way it was said, it was it said more like that. I thought. Jerry came out and was like, I'm here to keep Christian from getting emotionally attached to things that he needs to move on from so he can mature as an adult man. Like no, I didn't mean it like that. You're a very nostalgic person. I would say that Chris, uh, or that I came out first, the reason I came out first was because someone had to clear the way. Did you say that? I mean, I don't know how old I was when I was. Clear all the, the way? Like you had a baby machete? Like I came out first because I had to, because no one else would. Like Chris wasn't going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought I was like, I'm not putting you down. Obviously, like Chris has better things. Chris than deals have. with the people. You yeah. deal with the difficult situation. Jeremy deals with angry comments. I deal with uh, utility companies. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> anyway, getting into getting into some detailed twin stuff. But um, let's do some rapid fire of these guys to get through some of these. Uh, oh, the got, rest of these guys. How many we got left? Not not a ton. Okay, this goes along with the last one we just said. My three year old says, "Mama, what happens to us when we die?" Me panicking, not ready. Oh, um, well, three year old. Oh, never mind. I remember. We become new again smiles and walks away. I like that. That's a sweet sentiment. That's nice. There's another kind of pre-birth thing, or previous life rather. When I was about 16, I was in a grocery store with my mom and a tiny child I have never seen before suddenly latched himself around my leg. Wouldn't let go. Kept insisting I was his quote, first mommy. Sobbed when pried off of me by his actual mother. Weird. There's a lot of that too where you're like, oh, you're not my, there's one, I don't think I have it in here, but it's like, she remembered her other mom. Yeah. She's like, you're my favorite mom. Yeah. She's like, well, I, I hope I am your only mother. She said, well, you're my third mother, but you're my favorite. Do you have any more, Chris? I have some, I have to just get to your, what was the college one? I mean, what time are we running at here? You got how many? Oh, you want me to get to my creepy story? Yeah. Cause I, I just want to read that article. Okay, I'm going to read this last one here. This, this relates most to our show. I thought this was kind of cool. Coming from our last episode about like conspiracies and the prison structure of reality. This is kind of cool. Oh, yeah. Daughter, did you read this one? I did. I did, I did sneak, sneak it? a piece and it, it did creep me out a yeah. little bit. Daughter has existential epiphany in the middle of the night. I come home from work one night to find my darling two-year-old blonde daughter standing at the top of the stairs, staring up at the full moon in her jammies, teddy bear in hand. She should have been in bed by this time. 
Not wanting to scare her, I walked up the stairs, knelt down next to her, and asked her what she was thinking about. I was imagining she would say something childish like, Is the moon really made of cheese, Daddy? Something cute like that. Instead, she turns to face me with a very serious look on her face, and in a very serious and creepy monotone voice, says to me, We are all in the same cage. (laughs) Two years old. I nearly died of fright. I literally recoiled from her and ran back down the stairs backwards. I couldn't believe it. She said a few more creepy things like that, but it stopped after a while. We are all in the same <laughs> cage. Such a great existential, creepy, a prison planet type right. idea. You know, I mean, you could totally out of David. There's Ike's. a lot of stuff when it comes to like flat Earth and like there's this place that we can't get past. Right, that idea of like what's the moon grid thing? Right, that's that where the prison planet comes from. What's the, it called? Moon? The holographic prison or something? David, I had a book on it. Yeah, but there's basically we are in some sort of like cage. That's, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's the allegation. There, I remember there was a remote viewing thing too that was interesting where there was a a group of remote viewers who some some kind of weird story. There was this guy who led this outfit of basically young, attractive black women, and he like made outfits for them. But they would remote <laughs> remote view. But the the weird thing was they were extremely accurate, and they would hit one of the things they hit on was this place, and it was basically like this place where you would be basically cleansed of memory, so you could come back and continue to live in this prison Earth like area. Because for some reason they took you from another part of the universe, you'd committed some crime or whatever, and you're basically just you keep reliving lives on as a human on Earth, but you they just keep burning out your memory, so you have to stay on this prison. I mean, I don't know. This stuff huh. seems it's pretty out there, but I mean, it's intriguing. I hope it's not true. Yeah, because especially in the direction we're heading in, it's not going to be a fun place to live. Mm. Okay, so I things are going to go good. <laughs> <laughs> not can I have one of those bud lines? Yeah, sure can. Okay, I've got a few more here, guys. I want to do. Uh, this this ties into kind of the last couple of things we did. Um, John, do you want to read a couple here? This is under the cheeseburger.com situation. These are from pulled from Reddit. I'm hungry. All of these will be in the show notes, guys, if you want to check them out yourselves. In a time when my life was falling apart, I was eating lunch with my then four-year-old daughter, and she said, this isn't the same dimension, is it? That's kind of interesting. Hmm. Oh, was that it? I just imagine like being like you're, everything's falling apart in your life. Maybe you're, relationship with your wife and nothing feels real anymore and your daughter's like daddy this isn't the yeah, same that's dimension definitely weird kind of reminds you of the idea that like life feels so different now right okay continue john dimension is, this, is a weird concept for a four-year-old to grasp maybe she didn't understand true. what it meant yeah it's possible so she misused it okay this one's from uh geek among us john go ahead my son was two he was in a pattern of waking us up at about 5 a.m every morning One morning, I took him downstairs and plopped in front of the TV so I could try to go back to sleep for about 30 minutes on the couch, right by him. I woke up a few minutes later, and he was standing in the foyer, pointing into the kitchen, laughing. He then said, Mommy is floating in the kitchen! I didn't think much of it. (laughs) Went back to sleep for a bit. About 30 minutes later, his mom came downstairs, having just woken up, saying she had one of those weird dreams where she flew out of her body went downstairs and found herself in the kitchen. Freaky. Freaky. That is pretty interesting. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. that's uh, out-of-body experience. Yeah. It's someone seeing an out-of-body experience taking place. Right. And the children have the ability to, to see that. it. Right. And that goes back to that idea that they have a, their uh, separation of uh, older consciousness that's Let's closed off. Okay. Please don't continue. <laughs> <laughs> I had this crazy dream and I woke up just terrified. I looked over at my son and he simply said, Don't worry, Dad, you'll be okay. I smiled and went back to sleep. It wasn't until I woke up later that morning that I realized I'm only 19, still living with my ma, and sure as hell don't have a kid. I'm trying to keep his features sharp in my mind to see if my eventual child looks like him. I love this one, dude, because I have so many dreams. I've had dreams in the past where, like, I'm so sure that that was my daughter. Mm-hmm. Where, like, it's like I knew, like this was my daughter in my dream, and I remember how she felt, how she smelled, like the connection we had. Mm-hmm. And then I wake up and I'm really sad that I am a loser without a kid right now, and it's just weird to like think about that idea that you could be visited in the past or in the now, the child you might have in the future. It's an no, interesting yeah, idea, yeah, definitely. It's not quite on topic, but it was good. It's good. What is that, topic, topic master? He pointed <laughs> at me. Master. See him point? No. Not quite on topic. What I do you mean? mean it's it's still, a dream kitty had said something. the darndest things. Yeah, yeah, but this kid doesn't exist. Does it matter? It could be a ghost kid. It's still interesting to hear him say something. I liked it. Thanks, John. It was, I didn't say I didn't like it. I enjoyed it. I what just you, wanted Chris? to make sure we're on target here. 
Get my ledger out. All right, last one here. I babysit my little cousins all the time. The four-year-old was in the sandbox stirring up some stuff in a bucket. I ask her, <laughs> what are you making, Maya? She looks at me with a straight face and says, Unicorn blood. And then goes back to stirring. I just kept thinking, I'm babysitting Voldemort. <laughs> that's, put, that's off topic. Yeah, it's definitely off topic. Yeah. I, it was just a weird thing the kid said. But I put it in there because that's what, when you get those bangs, Chris, that are called, what are they called? Unicorn? Uh, Rainbow unicorn? Rainbow unicorns, yeah. Well, we started calling them unicorn blood for some reason. And then every time I go through the drive-thru to order one, I'll ask if they have unicorn blood. And somehow they know what I'm talking about. Yeah, because I think probably you say unicorn. It's the only thing in the entire building that is named unicorn. <laughs> that's probably true. Probably. I just thought that was a weird synchronicity that I came across unicorn blood. And that's what you have every time we have a very record specific. a show. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I did want to read this story. I think I'm going to save it for another Scary Stories episode we're doing coming up to the month of Halloween. Uh, but it's really good. It's about a, a college experience. And like I said, I think this could be like a new, like serious urban legend. But we will save it for another episode. And guys, if you have scary stories out there that you'd like us to share on the show that are real, please send them into us. Uh, if you know of anyone who has them, have them send them into us and uh, share the show, share that request, and we would love to play it on the show. So to wrap up this part about the creepy kids, Chris, do you have some advice for any parents out there that are, put your doctor hat on? Well, yeah, it's not my advice, but I came across some articles while finding these stories and there was some advice given by psychologists in case there are parents that are dealing with kids who are seeing things. Are they real? Are they not? And I thought this article was particularly interesting. This relates to imaginary friends, past lives, basically covers the gambit of childhood strange sayings. Did you say the sayings. gambit? Because that's an X-Men character. Did you mean the gamut? I said what I want to say. The gamut. So this comes from an article called, Why Do So Many Kids See Ghosts? Asked some psychologists. Um, and this comes from Rosemary Counter at the Washington Post. Oh, I, don't, I don't like this already. I don't like psychologists trying to explain away childhood awesomeness. <laughs> I agree. No, that's the thing. Childhood it's, magic. it's not. It's okay. not completely. Um, I think it's it's an even look at it. We know that between a third and two thirds of children have imaginary companions, says Charles Farron Howe, a psychologist at Durham University, where he investigates the phenomenon of hallucinations. Not too long ago, imaginary friends were considered a precursor to mental illness. Now we know they're a positive sign of healthy childhood development. Wow, I know that. Or hauntings. Quote, now adults come to me concerned if their kid doesn't have one, he says. Developmental psychologists such as Jean Paget have been fascinated by the murky line between fantasy and reality for kids, whether it's imaginary friends or dreams or, yep, ghosts. Old thinking assumed kids just couldn't differentiate between what's real and what's not, while new thinkers such as Wooly, Wooly, that's a great name for a scientist, Wooly believe, quote, kids know full well what's real, even if it looks like they can't tell the difference. If you would never tell your child their imaginary friend isn't real, or that they're just imagining things or even lying, you should treat an encounter with a so-called ghost the same way. Which presents a strange question. How should you react if your little one reports a visit from the other side? Most important, do not flip out. A lot of parents get worried about imaginary companions and strange experiences. Fahrenheit says, unless there's real distress, do not worry. To know whether there's real distress, just ask the kid. You want to work with the emotion, not the ghost, Wooly says. Now is not the time for a grown-up lesson on imagination versus reality. Because if they're scared, it doesn't matter anyway, she True. adds. True, yeah, good point. Instead, Wooly suggests you work within the fantasy, just like you might for a monster under the bed. Quote, engage the kid as to what it looks like and what it does. Ask her if she's scared of the ghost or if she likes it and if she's seen it before. A scary ghost can be tweaked as necessary. Maybe you can help the child pretend he's in old-timey underwear, for example. Of course, this doesn't work. <laughs> what? You know, if you've got a demon, a real demon in your baby's bedroom. <laughs> Put that demon in some old-timey underwear. Then it's up to you as a parent to decide if you want to encourage or discourage this belief. However, scientists agree it's important to never say never, Wooly says, because it's the scientific way to be. It can't be easy, but child psychiatrist Jim B. Tucker is balancing science and the paranormal at the Division of Perceptual Studies at the University of Virginia. Quote, We don't take the approach of believer or non-believer. We research and explore the phenomenon of children who report past lives, he says. Overlapping, often, are reports of kids who see dead relatives, including some who are dead long before the child was born. When you hear enough stories like that, you do start to think there must be something there, Tucker says. I'm open to it. That's all I can say. Whether you believe it or not, his best advice is to be cool. Quote, I don't know if you really have to do anything other than listen to what your child is saying, 
kids grow up and grow out of it and let it go. So I think that applies definitely to past lives. On the other hand, if there's some spirit or something scary that your child's seeing and it becomes, and other people start to see it in the home, I won't, I'll link this other one, but there's another story about that where there was a child who the parents took to a psychologist and they said the child uh, was psychotic because they were seeing this thing. It was an autistic child. The psychologist said it was having psychotic tendencies, probably becoming psychotic, maybe schizophrenic. Uh, they later found out that like other people in the home were seeing the same cowboy on the ceiling and other people Ooh. in the neighborhood were seeing the same cowboy in their homes. At that point, though, it was too late. The kid had already been medicated uh, for psychosis. Wow. The point being like, sure, it's not always a ghost, but sometimes Most of the it time. is. <laughs> Hair on the side of ghost before you medicate your kid. What you're but saying. At, at the same, obviously at the same time, you know, it could be, you know, kids do have imaginary friends. So that's part of it too. Um, but in the belief hole, the chances are. It's a ghost. Yeah, no, that's that's interesting for sure. You know, I always thought that, like, I just feel like, you know, you watch these movies where there's a kid who's being haunted and the parents are running in, like, there's no such thing as ghosts, you know, there's no, you know, I like the approach of where you, what you need to do is make your kid feel safer and by telling him it doesn't exist doesn't really help the situation because right. they're yeah, experiencing something. Because sure. they're, they're experiencing it whether they know it's real or not. Right. You need to make them feel stronger and safer and that's pretty much how you, I mean, I'm not a parent, so, but that would be, that was, I think, what I would do in that situation, yeah. you know. Um, Seems like the obvious choice. Yeah. But that's coming from people who do a ghost podcast. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. obvious to And us. who also don't have children. And who don't have children, so yeah. we don't have to deal with it yet. yet. But hopefully some. Any volunteers? Oh, good Lord. <laughs> Well, that's going to about wrap it up, I think, for this one, guys, huh? Anything else you guys had wanted? I think there are a lot of stories like this out there. Um, a lot of great stories we didn't get to include, like uh, children saying, like, with a teddy bear or something that was his mom's teddy bear, and, and her asking if he liked this teddy bear, and him saying, oh, I liked it when I gave it to you when I was your grandpa. Right, the reincarnation. The aspect. reincarnation stuff. That's the story I want to do on the main show, because there is so much research and so many validatable cases where there are, there are real people, not to say these aren't, but it's not just Reddit and Twitter handles, it's real people who've been interviewed by uh, real researchers giving these experiences where there, a lot of them have been validated, where the chances that they've had a memory like this and then can point out a home or recount a historical event and the details of right. something that happened in that death that's impossible to know yeah. unless you were there. There's so many cases of that. So we'll definitely do that sort of reincarnation episode along with, I think, one of the most fascinating things that people don't talk about a lot are the pre-life stories. Like what happens to them before they're born? Right. And not necessarily the death, but how do we before get life, here? the in-between stage, the things that they see, what those waiting rooms look like in different in, and how they relate the the string of similar characteristics. Yeah. All good ideas, huh? Well, guys, I hope that this uh, didn't creep you out too much. And uh, if you guys have any of these kinds of stories, creepy babysitter stories, uh, parents with your kids out there saying creepy stuff, or whatever, you know, any stories you guys have, send them in. Yeah, and, and for those of you who've gone to our speak pipe before, you now have up to five minutes to tell your tale. That's true. Sounds good. All right, guys. <laughs> well, we will see you next time. We don't do this on the Patreon. I noticed that. We don't do the unbelievable <laughs> on expansions, right? All right, guys. We'll see you next time. Yippity doo. <laughs> Weird. All right. All right, guys. We'll see you. Weird flex, but okay. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, hello, Jennifer. Come in, please. Oh, hi. N- nice to meet you. Oh, it's a pleasure to meet you, too. I'm so glad you could make it. Um, I'm going to take you to Rudy's room. <laughs> <laughs> Immediately. <laughs> First thing. <laughs> What's wrong with that? <laughs> I've met you now. What else would you uh, say? Uh, hi. You did great. You were, your girl was great. It's like more casual. You're like, whatever you oh, said. Here's, like, here's, here's a line. You threw my- me off right before we started where you said, well, I'm going to walk down the hallway. I could have <laughs> walked you down the hallway. Okay, here's the idea. That's true. You could have kept talking while I was I was just thinking, like, please come in, come in. Uh, and here's a good line. You could say something like, um, a regular sitter canceled. I'm glad you come in short notice a or lot. something. Sure, uh, you don't want to do that part. Right this way. I mean, I can if you want me to. Wait till the pressure's on you and see how you do. Oh, I know it's scary. Why you flip it? It's scary. <laughs> Why you do babysitter lady? Yeah, you do a good girl voice. 